two ribeye steaks, two baked potatoes, and uh, four or five years of those miniature frozen corn on the cob all at the same time. In Ninja's latest and greatest, I guess they put this out for the 2021 Christmas season, and uh, it's a one-lid device, and you may know all about it, but I call it the one-lid wonder. It steam fries, it pressure cooks, it's got a thermometer, it does a lot. I, I've, I've loved it so far. But we're about to cook all of that pretty much at the same time. I'm going to cook the potatoes and the corn a little ahead and then get them started, and then we're going to stop at a certain point and put those two ribeye steaks, both of them, right on top, let all that juice and stuff run on top of those potatoes and that corn i think you're going to be impressed let's get it started okay so here comes what i'm going to do tonight now i've done a similar recipe and i'll explain that in a minute but tonight these are the two ribeyes i'm doing i'm going to do them both at the same time and they're nice thick ribeyes but i'm not going to put those in the pot at this time i'm going to put the potatoes that you have right here, you see right here, these two baking potatoes, they're going in the bottom, and then four or five ears of corn are going here. In other words, this will be sitting on top of that, the corn will be on top of it, and then when I get to a point, I'm gonna say around 170 in these potatoes because I look for 200 degrees on a potato. Then once I get to around 170, I'm gonna open it up, put my steaks right here, and turn this over to broil. And then we're going to broil those, and I figure it'll take, it might take 20 minutes or so with two steaks. Usually with one steak, you can get about eight, you know, figure 15 minutes. But with two, we're going to learn. So I'm going to get that started. I'm going to get this set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I do want to point out something that happened last night to keep you possibly from doing it to yours. But I've, I've already put my one cup of water. It is already in there. I'm going to show you what happened last night with a bonehead I did. And uh, you can see it right there. If you see that cable, a little bit of damage on that cable. Now, I've tested it, and it still works, so I hope it stays that way. But I'll explain in a minute, once we get all this started, how I did it, where maybe you won't do that. And if you'll notice right here, I'm making sure my cable has plenty of slack. I've turned my potato to where it does, where it's able to have that slack and not be in a condition where it might you know, fold up or get in the way because when you close that lid, you want to make sure everything's good. I'm going to go ahead and put this on, although that's where the stakes are going, but I'd just rather have it sitting there. But there you go. Six ears of corn, two baking potatoes. Got my thermometer in my largest potato. I'm going to close it. I've got it set to steam crisp uh, section, making sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take it to 400 degrees. I'm going to press manual, and I'm going to take this to, I'm going to say 175, because my, my intention is to, I want my potatoes to be 200 degrees. I want to be able to uh, put my steaks on, and it finish that extra 25 degrees while those steaks are cooking. It, I, I know that's probably common sense, but anyhow, I'm vented, we're off and running, and uh, I'll get my act together and show you those ribs I did last night and kind of explain what happened there, so I'll be back. Okay, so to get back to what happened last night with that cable, and uh, also to show you this, I was a little concerned last night with doing that potato sitting in that water, as I'm sure a lot of people are. Well, it, it, it worked excellent. You can see I was able to eat all of the, the skin and all. It kind of turns into a broth. You know, it, 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 it works. I'll just leave it at that. But what happened to that cable, or what I did wrong, was I had uh, four racks of these three rib sections and should have just went with three and I'll, you'll see all that in the video you won't see where i did i didn't the part where i hurt this i didn't even realize it so i didn't it's not i didn't capture that i'll put it like that but what happened i believe i'm almost positive is they're really close to that element in the top of this device it's closer than the older ninja and in other words what happened was that cable was laying on top of that rib or one of those ribs, especially maybe one of the fatter ones that was probably about that thick, and it was just really close to that element, and it, it burnt that outer sheathing. Now, it doesn't look hurt, and I went on their website tonight and tried to get another one, and uh, it didn't show it, so I'm hoping they make that available, but anyhow, now you know. Okay, so I just opened it, and I'm going to show you why I am changing my method. There is my 
corn. Well, I'm not stopping. It's not bad. It'll be okay. It's just I got to do something with that corn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the corn out. It'll be fine. Take my word. It needs some butter and it'll work. Uh, next time I'll have to do a little bit of different. But this is mainly about the steak and potatoes anyhow. But it didn't do that last night. But I know why. Because those ribs were on top of it. So long story short, I'm going to close this back down. Let the potatoes keep cooking. It's just a, it's part of the learning curve. Hey, it's good for y'all to see that too. But you can see, it's not going to hurt it. Some butter will fix that. So I'm going to get those off, get them in a bowl, and then we're going to go pretty much straight on with those because, well, I'm going to get those in a bowl. Let me get that done. Okay, there they are in that bowl with a pretty good uh, uh, helping of butter on them. <laughs> and there's no reason I can see to wait for these potatoes to get to uh, 175. Again, the potatoes can do a lot of things. I can finish them while those steaks are resting. I will let you see those. They look good. And they're at 167. So I got to get my glove back on because those things, that thing's still hot. And I'm going to set this back in there with the top rack still on there. Again, I think last night those ribs shielded it or blocked it from that excess heat but again it, it, we're all learning and i hope that that may help you in some way and i'll tell you something else these potatoes are going to hit 175 in a minute so i it's going to turn i'm going to try and turn it off i guess we're you know what i'm not sure it will on broil but we're about to find out so right there in fact i want a little bit of room between them and i got salt and pepper that's all i got there's how I got my ribeyes set up. <clears throat> I'm going to, I may turn it off. Let's just see. I'm going to make sure that don't, what I did last night doesn't happen again. So I'm going to move that cable right there. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something with it because there's exactly what happened last night. It folded over and then got on top of that rib and then it was really, really close to that element. So I'm going to turn this a little bit and get it to do that right there. Make sure it's still plugged in. And then kind of watch it and make sure it goes off to the side. Well, you can see the potatoes already hit 170. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna take it over here. I may have to open and raise the lid and watch that cable again. And uh, just to reset it completely. In fact, I am a little edgy about that cable now because I don't want it going away since how they don't have one on their website. And uh, all right, now we are down and ready. I'm going to go to uh, broil right there. And it still offers me the uh, manual, so it will cut it off if you have a temperature set. But we're not going to put a temp because all we're going to do is broil those steaks and I'm going to check those with my thermopen. We are off and running. Be back. All right, there's how they look after I kind of hit them with a little bit of butter. And they're not bad. In fact, it kind of gives them a little bit of a grilled look or something. They'll be fine. Take my word. So no harm, no foul. Okay, we're coming up on five minutes of broil. I'm dying to know what they look like. And you can see, man, they look good already. I'm going to let them go a little bit longer. I am a little nervous about that cable, and it looks fine. So now you know. Be back in a minute. Okay, we're coming up on six minutes because they look pretty close right then. I have raised the camera so you can see in there a little better. And I think they need flipping. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to add time, of course. We're at... Uh, well, there's been about five and a half minutes past is all that's passed. And I want to get this side seared. They're already seasoned or salt and peppered on this side. So here we go. I'll check temps when that ends at four minutes and 19 seconds. Okay, we're coming up on the end of 10 minutes. I'm kind of shocked. We're going to definitely take some readings. Now, that element is so close on this device, but look at that. I mean... They look really good, and just like always, air frying a steak is, uh, it, it always shocks me. Let's see what we got. 116, I mean, that would probably rest out at, at, at rare. There's 120, 119, so we're not far from where, I, 128 is where I, you know, where I pull them. So I'm, I'm going to let that, I'm going to set it back now. 
and I'm gonna let it run for I don't know I'm gonna set it up for maybe be maybe uh, uh we'll just let it run and I'm gonna watch it so I'm gonna say probably another two minutes but I'll be back okay I'm gonna open it up right now I mean I'm getting a little bit of smoke but nothing drastic but it happened way faster than I was expecting again it it, it just blows me away every time i air fry a steak it's a really good way that not a lot of people do we are there one well 123 yeah maybe so maybe i flip it and let it go just because that was right in the 121 i'm gonna flip it and let it go another minute or two i'm gonna see what it looks like on the other side uh an air fried steak is underrated I'll, I'll put it like that in my opinion it's not it's not as uh, popular as it should be now those potatoes i think i can get a reading from that thermometer in a minute but we'll worry about that when i get these steaks done but well there ain't a lot more to be said they, they look excellent make sure my well i'm gonna have to set this camera back where it can hold itself and i can guide this cable because i don't want to damage it again but now you know okay so i know that's not but like another minute and a half but it just makes me a little edgy i i don't want to overshoot my steaks i don't like one burn up and you can see we're we are definitely as far as i'm going just how long it takes really quick i mean i might have should have lifted that lid a little early because you see i'm one at best, 140. One, there's a 135. That makes me feel a little better. I'd rather got them at 128. Now, I might have should have pulled them a while ago, but hey, it's not a crisis. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put them right there, and then I'm going to see if I can find a way to read those potatoes temps with, uh, with what's already there, and I'll show you what they look like because they are covered in that... Uh, the, the juice from that steak and I'd love for the uh, the corn to have been that way maybe I should have put it in the bottom too but it, we're learning and uh, that means a bunch to me I'm going to hold this down and see if it'll let me have it there you go 192 I held down the manual button so I'm going to let it run while these rest because my target is 200 but there's a pretty good window on a potato and I imagine when that rested it would make 200 but 200 to say 195 to say 210 is per is perfect nothing wrong with it. but anyhow i'm gonna hush and get this kind of set up and get ready <laughs> all right while that rested approximately five minutes we got to 197 so we're about to take those out line them up and you can see i kind of prettied those up put <laughs> those corn up it doesn't they'll be fine and uh a lot of times things like that kind of surprise you, but it is part of cooking. It really is, and honestly, it happens quite often. I like to trip over my camera. <laughs> I like to got my tripod, but I survived that. Let's see. Here comes this one, 197, which is a perfect temperature for a potato. You can see now it does get a little nasty in the bottom, looks like, but you take my word that this material right here and if you've ever owned a ninja you know that will wipe right out so i'm going to make some pictures of that i'm not really sure how i'm going to do my thumbnails but i got time so i'm going to make some pictures of that right there and then we're going to cut those steaks and even those potatoes so i'll be back okay there it is after it's rested a few minutes and i made a few pictures but I mean, you can see that the corn did get a little burn on one end, but quite honestly, I got a feeling it'll be fine. <laughs> I keep apologizing for it, but it just might work. What we're going to do is cut this one right in half and uh, see what it looks like right now. we we'll just do it like that, and that looks like to me what anybody I've ever met will eat. Now, again, if you don't want yours that uh, red, you... You just do it a little longer. I mean, it's, it's all common sense. But this right here, if you ask me, is what makes eating a steak uh, good. And it, it, it's an air fryer. Not only that, we just did potatoes, corn on the cob, uh, a full course 
everything you need right here. So I'm going to lay that out. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to make pictures of that, but I'm going to show it to y'all first. And uh, let's just let's just get a sneak bite right here. And you can see it, it, it's it's my perfect temp. That's that's what I like. And I could tell by looking, <laughs> I didn't have to eat it. It's good. There you go. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the potato. And the potato's 200 degrees, so I mean that if you know that's the target temp for any potato, and that was no different. And the corn, well, let's see. Mm-hmm. And we'll even try the burnt side. I'm not gonna be able to talk. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with any of it. All done in really reasonable time, but mainly inside in your uh, Ninja, I, again, I forget, the one lid device. Their 2021 Christmas season, uh, I love the thing. I'm not going to lie. I do. I love it because of that thermometer, and it does other things. I, you know, I won't get into that, but it releases automatically it steam fries it air fries and it pressure cooks but anyhow you see what you can get you see how easy it is how fast it was i think that ended up like around i don't remember i'd have to look back on it but like 13 or 14 minutes for two ribeyes on broil and again they're cooked perfect Uh, steakhouse quality and probably better than most steakhouses go to it, they are mine because they always overcook or undercook or something mine <clears throat> when you cook your own you know what you got especially when you use a thermometer of some kind but hey i love y'all all and it's taking a while to chew up all this food that i put in my mouth while we were talking but i hope you try this i at least hope you try an air fried steak that's the the thing that I think is underrated with air fryers. You don't see it enough. It's really good. Anyhow, hey, I love y'all. I'm not sure I can get in this frame, but I love y'all. Y'all come back to see me. Have a, a, a great night. Try one of these. Bye. All right, I already put my microphone up and everything, but I don't know how I'm going to insert this in there, but I forgot to show you the potato, which is absolutely as good as you might have expected just as everything else is here it's it's an excellent meal absolutely but anyhow i'll see if i can find a way to put it in